Love talking Miami football with Cam Underwood. We track him down just as much as we possibly can to talk up the Canes uh, with a big game against uh, Syracuse at home this Saturday, 3.30, national TV audience in store. Uh, Cam, of course, with the State of the U, please join him right there for the best in Syri- in uh, <laughs> Miami football coverage. Syracuse football coverage as well, just, just this week. But uh, Miami all the time, Miami sports all the time, and of course, football is king, especially in the fall. And uh, Miami sitting pretty at 5-0. and oh. So you bring up Syracuse. Uh, did you gain anything from uh, the insight uh, and the conversation that you had with Noon's Magician? Yeah, the, uh, the official name of that website is Troy Noon's is an absolute magician. Uh, so the longest name in, in blogging, I guess. But uh, yeah, no, uh, they gave their managing editor, John Casillo, just gave us a great question and answer uh, about them. So learned a little bit about uh, their team and their players and, you know, what they've been through and everything. So, you know, uh, we've all seen the conversation Dino Babers had about how when he took the job, he claimed that he was going to beat a top three team, which he last week did, his team. And uh, it's kind of the polar opposite from Al Golden in that, if you remember that Cincinnati game, when Al Golden famously said, don't rise to the occasion, you know, blah, blah. Dino Babers said, no, this is a huge moment. Like, treat it like it's a big moment and go and win this moment. But it's a monumental kind of a thing. And they went out there and they did that. So interesting to see the kind of different personality there. But, yeah, you know, just talking to them um, about Syracuse. Syracuse likes to play fast. Obviously, you know, that's one of their calling cards. But Miami Space teams that want to play fast. Uh, We gave up 85 plays to Toledo and beat them by three touchdowns. Six days later, on a short week, Duke had 88 plays. And we know what we did to them. We beat them by four touchdowns. So this is not the first time that we're seeing somebody try to push tempo. You know, and I think that, I mean, my, we, pra- we don't have an indoor practice facility yet. So with the exception of the week after Hurricane Irma, when we pr- finally came back against Toledo, these kids practice outside in 85 degree heat with 93% humidity, even to this point of October. So, I mean, I think that Miami is in good enough condition. And that's a huge thing to be able to combat. Syracuse because you have to line up quick you have to kind of simplify the schemes a little bit I think and you know you the mental tempo also has to be key because it's a different thing when you like if you remember Miami years ago well again when Al Golden was the coach we would go to line and say hut hut and then look at the sideline and get the signals Syracuse is getting the line most times hut and go so you really got to be engaged mentally and know if you're doing something different or what your assignments are. Uh, so there's things like that. Our resident coach, Justin Dottavio, Dottavio, excuse me, on State of the U is one of the best in the business with his X's and O's breakdowns, uh, really, really doing a great job. So he looked at some of the Syracuse plays and things that they like to do uh, from empty sets with 10 personnel with a couple of different things, diagrammed it out, has beautiful videos in these posts. You really need to get it. Uh, we call them clinic talk when he talks about the X's and O's. So he did some great stuff, and it's so good that even some Syracuse fans who found us through our question and answer with News Magician, they linked to his piece and said, whoa, this is awesome, and I learned something about my team's offense by reading the Miami site. So between the question and answer, between all the previous stuff that we've done, both narrative things, talking about Miami actually building um, a winning persona as a team and the, you know, actual analysis, analytical things talking about these are the numbers and these are the X's and O's. I think that we've given pretty good content, uh, you know, about Syracuse this week. I've learned a lot, obviously, looking into them because the last time we played them was 2003, four, something like that. I was an undergrad back the last time that we played. Uh, so it's been a while. Uh, so, you know, I did have to dig in and do a little research. But, you know, I think between all the stuff that we've offered and reaching out to News Magician, we've had some good stuff. So be sure that you check it out. And I know it sounds like I'm just plugging the website, but really, honestly and truly, we have some great stuff for you to learn about Miami Syracuse on both sides of the aisle. So go check it out, man.